An 18-year-old girl fights for her life after taking a contaminated ecstasy tablet at her birthday party. Leah Betts collapsed after taking a tablet which police believe may have been contaminated. It's reported she drank seven litres of water that night to counteract the effects of the ecstasy. Police hunting the dealer who supplied Leah Betts with ecstasy say they're now following a multitude of leads that have surfaced since her death. Our son had first came into the kitchen and told us Leah had been taken ill at half past twelve. I think it was, I recall, it was about ten minutes until Leah just stopped breathing. And the next time I saw Leah, she was on a ventilator. It was the ecstasy that killed her. On Friday and Saturday nights, the Royal Liverpool Hospital sees the downside of ecstasy. Well, let's give her a bit of fluid. Terry Ann, can you hear me? The first step is to cool the patient down. Just a few degrees Celsius can make the difference between life and death. So you've got a drip up and you've got a Temperature, body fluids, heart rate, breathing. All these are regulated without us having to think about them when we're well. That's homeostasis, but pushed too far, homeostasis breaks down. We're doing a simulation exercise here. We're rehearsing like any team, so that uh, on the day of the, of the real uh, game, or when the, the real patient comes in, the doctor in charge is able to concentrate on what's wrong with the patient, while the other nurses and doctors know exactly what to do to keep the patient alive. Bad reactions to E are serious, but not usually fatal. Every year, young people across Britain take more than 20 million ecstasy tablets. Less than 20 of them die. So why Leah Betts? She'd been my best friend for um, about three years. Um, I met her at school. And soon after that, we became best friends. Leah was really looking forward to her 18th birthday and she really wanted a party and when her mum and dad agreed that she could have one at their house she was really happy. And there were about 25 to 30 people arrived for the party all in very very good mood, very nice atmosphere. We both took the tablet and when you take ecstasy you're really happy and you want to dance, and you're friendly with everyone, and you're very talkative. It makes you like yourself more, and it just makes you say things that perhaps normally you wouldn't say. About 12 o'clock, Leah asked me to go upstairs with her because um, she went to get some water. Um, we got about three quarters of the way up the stairs, and she fell over and said that her legs um, felt funny. So I took her into the bathroom where she drank some water but then she said that her head was hurting and that her, she couldn't feel her legs and that she wanted her mum. And I said to her, what on earth have you done Leah? And she came straight out with it. I've taken an ecstasy tablet and I don't feel well. And then she started being violently sick. She was bent over the toilet, being violently sick. Her legs collapsed on her and she said that 
her eyes were going funny that she couldn't see. And by this time, I'd sent my son down to get Paul upstairs because I, I couldn't hold her up. When I got up there, Leah was bent over the toilet and was vomiting. Um, she was on her knees and she was complaining that her legs were packing up. She was screaming with the pain in her head. And the plea for help, you don't get that when you've just got a stomach ache or you've just got a normal headache. This was serious. And then she started having spasms of stiffness, not shaking like an epileptic fit, but just these stiff spasms. And she kept saying her jaw felt funny and then she would scream with pain again. That scream and that cry of pain. And I had just got through to ambulance control, just at the point of getting through. And she just stopped breathing. I was shocked and just didn't believe it. It just didn't hit me at that time that she might die. I just thought that she'd be OK. When somebody dies in unexpected circumstances, well, an inquest has to be held. And this is held by a coroner who will invite certain people to provide evidence. I was asked to go to this inquest on Leah Betts as a medical expert in order to tell the court the effects of ecstasy. It was vital to find out why Leah died. If the E she took was contaminated, others could die from taking the same tablets. After Leah Betts died, samples were sent to our laboratory to be analysed. It's possible to separate out tiny quantities of drugs from blood samples using a solvent. Any drugs that we're interested in within this blood sample has extracted up into the top solvent layer and it's this layer that we're interested in. Overnight, this machine compares the test sample with tubes containing known quantities of MDMA, the chemical name for ecstasy. So when the machine is finished, you get a printout like this, and each of these lines show what and how much of each compound this person has taken. So you can see here, that they've taken ecstasy, MDMA. But besides ecstasy, there was nothing unusual in Leah's blood. So the drug itself must have made her push her body too far. Dancing is like any other kind of exercise. It generates heat in our muscles. Homeostasis normally keeps the body temperature between 37 and 39 Celsius. Above 39 is danger level. So on Friday nights at Milton Keynes Sanctuary, a group of volunteers keeps everyone cool. I'm spraying these people because the body heat has risen to such a temperature that it needs to come down again. It's like if you feel this guy here, you just feel his arm. It's like, that's hot. That's about two, three times hotter than it's supposed to be. Do you know what I mean? It's like you've got some serious piece of fever. But the water in these sprays isn't actually very cold. It cools people down in another way, through evaporation. Evaporation happens when molecules of water try to turn into vapor. To do that, they must break free from the surface of the water. And breaking free takes extra energy. If the water is resting on warm skin, the nearest available energy is the heat energy from that skin. So the molecules take the energy they need from the skin and break free. That leaves the skin with less heat, so it cools down. This is why we sweat when we get hot. A microscope reveals the body's cooling system. Tiny glands in the skin which can let out water from the blood. Once the water's evaporated and the body's cooled down, the glands stop sweating automatically. But there's a limit to how fast sweating can cool a body down. Ecstasy can make people ignore the danger warnings that their body sends to them. 
Could this be what happened to Leah? Perhaps she overheated. She used to love dancing. When we used to go to, um, we went to the pub for her birthday and she was, was the only one dancing because nobody else would get up and dance. So she didn't care about dancing on her own or anything. No, you can't sit down, you gotta dance. Everyone was dancing. But Leah wasn't dancing as much as she normally would because like, cause all her friends were there. She was going around talking to all of them. So if Leah wasn't dancing, she can't have overheated. But ecstasy also affects another part of the body's homeostatic system, water balance. Only a third of the human body is made from solid material. Two thirds is water. Blood and body fluids make up about 45 liters in an adult. Every day we pass out a couple of liters in urine. Sweating takes up to another liter and moisture in our breath uses still more. The exact figures depend on what the body is doing. But on average, doctors recommend we drink about three or four liters a day. Drinking too much normally does no harm. The water the body doesn't need is turned into urine by our kidneys. We have two kidneys and they are situated in our back, just at the bottom of the rib cage on the back on either side. This comes from um, a, a post-mortem. It's the human kidney and here is the artery which takes blood from the body and the kidneys filter the blood. Once the blood is filtered, it passes back through a vein just underneath the artery and the filtering process produces urine. The urine gets concentrated in this part here and then it is passed down the ureter, this tube here, to the bladder and eventually we feel the need to pass urine. The only problem about looking at a kidney like that is that you can't see the blood vessels. Well, what I've got for you here is a cast which has been made by filling up the blood vessels with a plastic material and then when it sets one can dissolve away the kidney. This is the aorta which is the main blood vessel in the body. It sends out arteries to each kidney. Once it reaches the kidney it begins to divide and subdivide until you've got many 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 small vessels each one of those leading to a glomerulus which is the filtering unit of the kidney. Urine is produced. It's then concentrated down microscopic tubules until it gets to that part there, the yellow part, and then the urine passes down the ureter, as I pointed out before. Taking ecstasy can affect the body's water balance because it stops the kidneys working. We knew that it could make you thirsty and that you was meant to drink water. Leah, every time I saw her, she was always had a glass of water in her hand. She said she was really thirsty and that her mouth was dry. She took a cup upstairs with her and she was getting it from the sink, the, the tap at the sink. We know it could affect your kidneys from programs we'd seen on telly in soaps and that, but we'd never thought that really it, it caused death. As the inquest into Leah's death came to a close, two facts were clear. One, she wasn't sweating, so she didn't need to drink. But two, she did drink, a lot. And the water wasn't passed out by her kidneys. Why? I'm now going to show you a human brain. I've cut this brain in half so that you can see what, what it's like. Now, the top part is called a cerebrum. That's the bit that we think with. And deeper down are some of the more automatic things, like the way we control our breathing, our heart, consciousness, whether we're awake or whether we're asleep. All of these things 
are worked by the brain stem. Now, um, on this part of the brain, I've cut this brain in half already, is, this is the inside of the brain, there's the grey matter and the white matter. And just under here, you have the hypothalamus. This is the part that senses the concentrations of fluids in the body, particularly the concentration of the blood. The hypothalamus detects how much water is in the blood. If there's too little, it sends a chemical message through the blood to the kidneys, telling them to cut down on urine production. This will keep the water in the body and make the blood less concentrated. A drink will bring the water level back to normal and the kidneys can start making urine once again. Chemical messages in the body are called hormones. The one controlling the kidneys is called antidiuretic hormone because it stops the kidneys making urine. If you're out in the middle of the desert and dried out, you're going to be sending out, your brain is going to be sensing that you are very, very dried out, that your bloodstream is concentrated and that it has to react by sending out a lot of antidiuretic hormones saying don't pass any more urine or we're in trouble. Uh, another day you may be drinking a lot of fluid and the brain says okay mm, kidney pass plenty of water and it says that not by sending a nervous message but by sending a hormone into the bloodstream and then the kidney senses that and reacts. There's one unfortunate twist with ecstasy, and that is it makes the body produce too much antidiuretic hormone. If you drink too much after taking ecstasy, you may not pass it out. This is what happened to Leah Betts. She drank a lot of water. The kidneys didn't respond as they normally do, and unfortunately this made her brain swell up and she died. Taking ecstasy is playing around with the mechanisms that actually keep you alive and also it damages certain types of nerve terminals in the brain. The best advice is not to take it. If people do take it, well then, and they're dancing, they should drink perhaps a pint of fluid every hour. If they're not dancing, then it's better not to drink anything or at most a small cup of fluid every hour. She was just a normal person, I suppose people think that she wasn't a normal person at a normal party, but she was. The last photograph I have of Leah is of her blowing her candles out, and that was about an hour before she died. There was lots and lots of people there, lots of family and friends, and um, lots of film people and papers. It wasn't like a normal funeral, really, with all the cameras and press there. <clears throat> Today is going to be the day that they're going to throw it back to you. By now you should have somehow realized what you gotta do I don't believe that anybody feels the way I do about you now